Oh, goody. All right. What's going on, everybody? Zombies here again. And today we're back with another Marvel Snap video. Today we're going to travel back into the past to the early days of Marvel Snap and take a look at the very first Broken Season Pass card, Silver Surfer. Now, the true old heads from Beta might argue that Wave was technically the first busted Season Pass card, but I think for this series, it makes more sense to start after Global Launch, since that's when more people started playing the game. Don't worry though, Wave enjoyers, I've got something special cooking for her too that you'll see in the near future. With that out of the way, let's break down the snap history of the most iconic Herald of Galactus. In all card games, context is key, as no card exists alone in a vacuum, so it's important to understand the context of where Snap was at the time of Silver Surfer's release. The Power Cosmic season began at the start of December 2022, and right before the launch of the season, Snap got its first post-launch balance patch as well as the addition of the token shop and a bunch of powerful cards added to the newly created Series 4 and Series 5 rarities. At this point, most players who started at release were still relatively early on in their Pool 3 collection journey. I remember myself getting super hyped up about pulling the Destroyer back in October, as he was the best 6 cost card in the game at the time, and helped me achieve Infinite for the very first time. Like most other card games, the power level was a lot lower at the start compared to where it is today. And with some of the higher strength cards like Destroyer, Sarah, and Mysterio taking some nerfs to their power, there was room for many different decks to compete in the meta. But that was about to change. It's worth noting that up until this point, the previous season pass cards had not been super strong or highly played. There were not many options outside of Nightcrawler as an easy way to enable Miles for decks not fully dedicated to the move theme. Black Panther was stronger and more played, but his true potential was locked behind Series 3 cards many players did not have in Wong and Arnim Zola. And even then, Shang-Chi could still easily answer him as a card everyone past Pool 2 had access to. As a result of this, neither of these cards were super dominant or highly played after their initial release. On December 5th, 2022, the Power Cosmic Season dropped, and with it, Silver Surfer. In its original form, Surfer was a 3 cost, 0 power, with Honor Veal give your other 3 cost cards plus 3 power. This marks the first time we would see a card give other cards this high an amount of power as a buff, but it would not be the last. At the end of the day, Marvel Snap is a game all about numbers, and sometimes what looks like a small amount on the surface of one or two more power can make a world of difference. This was very true for Silver Surfer, as even though his own body wasn't adding power directly itself to the board, the boost to your other three drops was so high it more than made up for it. Since the game was still newer and the card pool wasn't as large, the ways to build around Silver Surfer were fairly obvious. Overnight, Brood went from a more fringely used card in Cerebro or Patriot uh, to being a core enabler for the strongest card in the game. It wasn't the only card Surfer was good with, but there was no other way to get down that many extra 3 cost bodies to really take full advantage of the buff Surfer had to offer. Some other cards that really enjoyed this boost were things like Storm and Juggernaut, allowing you to close down a lane that you could boost up later with Surfer if necessary, tech cards like Killmonger and Cosmo, as well as some big bodied threes in Polaris and 3-7 Maximus to help round out the rest of the deck's threats. And Sarah was used as the top end to enable playing three three drops on the final turn of the game. Mr. Negative also leveraged the card well too, turning Surfer into a 0-3 and letting you go heavier on powerful ongoings like Wong, Mystique, and Iron Man, as well as other good on-reveal cards like Ironheart and Wolfsbane. Fast was a super powerful inclusion in that version of the deck too, since most of your cards pre-negative flip were under 3 power, and it offset Mr. Negative's biggest downside in being a terrible card to have on the board. Due to Bast being an expensive Series 5 card though, it was much more rare to see, since most players focused on other new cards that were more powerful and flashy, like She-Hulk, Shuri, Thanos, and Galactus. One card that is common in Surfer decks today, but wasn't around as much back then, was Absorbing Man. At release, Absman was a 4-3, 
so outside of curving out Brood into Abs, it was challenging to find time to be able to play this card, since it clashed with the deck wanting to play as many threes as possible, even with the added cost reduction from Sarah. Like Bast, this card was more expensive, being a Series 4 release, and its use cases were so few that it wasn't really a priority for most players to spend their precious tokens on, though that would change later the following month. It didn't take long for Surfer to completely take over the metagame, with Negative and Sarah Surfer sharing the crown. Very few other decks could reasonably compete with it on power, outside of the classic Leader Deathwave and Shuri She-Hulk, which were both more expensive decks that lacked suitable budget replacements. Where players were at in their Pool 3 journey definitely played a part in Surfer's popularity too, as you could build more budget versions of the deck that were still fairly effective so long as you picked up Brood and maybe Sarah from the token shop or got lucky with opening them on the collection track. Some other powerful new cards were released throughout the season as well, such as Null and Darkhawk. However, due to the high price point of Series 5 releases, as well as their almost non-existent chance of being opened from the collection track, there was very little experimenting being done with these cards from the general player base. In Null's case, full-on destroy decks just seemed worse than Death Wave, having to use weaker cards like the 3-1 Venom, and not as easily being able to reduce the then 9 cost death compared to how Wave did. Korg and 4-6 Rock Slide were generally viewed as weaker cards back then too, so there wasn't too much excitement around Darkhawk either. Sentry was there as well, but outside of getting lucky with Viper, the risk posed by playing the card was often not worth the reward, due to the lack of other support cards it had available. Even as someone who had a head start from playing the beta and had finished Pool 3 by the time of Surfer's release, it didn't seem like these new cards had a good chance of stopping the metagame's new Tyrant. There was just no good way of targeting the Silver Surfer decks with tech outside of a lucky Cosmo snipe, and very few other decks packed enough of a punch to put up a reasonable fight against them. As the season neared its end, it was very clear to much of the player base that Silver Surfer was incredibly overpowered and needed to be toned down. Almost no one thought that a nerf would occur while his season pass was still being sold, so the earliest hope for a change would be sometime next month in the new year. It was still unclear at the time though just how frequent balance changes would be in Snap. In the three months the game had been out so far, only one balance patch had occurred. Players who remembered the early years of Hearthstone, Ben Brode's first game, were concerned balance changes would be few and far between, like in the early HS days. I shared these concerns as someone who really enjoyed early Hearthstone, but was pushed away from it initially because of the dominance of Undertaker Hunter. Bring out your dead. 12 seconds later. after the release of their first expansion, Curse of Noxramus. It took almost six months for Blizzard to admit the mistake they had made with the card and finally nerf it. This was also uncharted territory for Snap too, as no one knew how much Silver Surfer being a season pass card people paid real money for might impact their thoughts on making a balance adjustment to it, especially when non-pass owners still had not even had a chance to play with it yet. Balance adjustments seem limited to occurring in the one patch the game got each month, and the OTA balance changes we are familiar with today were not something that had happened before, or was even thought possible by the player base. By the time this had become a hot topic in the community, it was late into the December season, and Second Dinner had closed up shop for the year. No one had any idea of what would happen come January, and arguments about whether a nerf was justified or not were still heated within the community. The future of Snap was uncertain and players were desperate for some developer insight into how this would be dealt with. But the new year would bring something even more savage than anyone could have expected, providing a truly worthy challenger for Silver Surfer. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video and were around for this time and snap, let me know what you thought about it in the comments below. If you want to see more content like this, be sure to like and subscribe. It helps out a ton. That's going to wrap it up for this one. I'll see you next time in the Savage Lands.